morning, Matt. Hello, Chef. How you doing? Good, yourself? Good. Thanks, I might get on the bike, it's good. Even if it is a short ride. Glad you can Thanks. make it. Thanks. Uh, yeah, excited to go and learn about, uh, about bees and see what we've been doing there. Let me uh, drop this off and we'll be good to go. Uh, quite a few more boxes than last year, huh? Correct. We've got five hives uh, at Skybase this year. Yeah. Uh, we'll use those five hives to jumpstart Pico next year, uh, assuming we don't have a heavy winter loss. Yeah. But uh, we've got two this year that matured soon enough for honey. The big ones? Yeah, they're not completely drawn out, but we'll dive in there in a few minutes and yeah. we'll check it out and good, see good. what honey has been collected in the last month or so. Right. Several years ago when we were working with the sustainability efforts to try and, and do more, we talked about planting wildflowers on the slopes to help with the erosion. So, you know, my wheels as a chef, I started turning, well, geez, if we're going to plant wildflowers, then we should be putting, get, putting some bees up there and collecting the honey and then using it into the restaurant. So, you know, that was several years ago. So to actually see this come full circle, is, it's, it's great, you know. So I'm, I'm excited to get the honey and I'm excited to bring it back to the hotel and start working with it. Let's open it up, take a look. Exciting to be in here. Yep. A little nervous. Not little... to worry, not to worry. Yeah. The uh, smoke makes bees think that the forest is on fire and they might need to make a speedy exit. So instead of defending the hive, they all load up on honey in case they need to move and make a new home somewhere. Really? And with that in mind, in a full belly, they're not interested in stinging anyone. Okay, let's pull one of these frames. They're not quite mm -hmm. done yet, but they're within a day or two, I'll bet. So how many times have you been stung doing this? Uh, per year or in total? <laughs> I get stung probably 50 or 60 times a year. It's only the first one or two that hurt. So yeah. here we see a, f a frame that's all capped. Yeah, so that's all honey inside. Yeah, all that capped honey has had the appropriate amount of moisture removed. So yeah, you the, can actually see it dripping here. Huh? Yeah, so it won't ferment. So we oh, do I have like to that. wait until it's capped before we harvest it a Can't little. Can't get any fresher than that, huh? Oh, that's as fresh as it gets, wow. sir. Isn't Another thing the bees will do is they would much rather pick up their precious honey than bother stinging anybody. So a lot of beekeepers will take a little bit of this comb and they'll put it out in the front of the hive and the bees will leave them alone while they're checking out the rest of the hive. Hey, what? Wow. That's as fresh as it gets, sir. It is, isn't it? You'll notice it's one color, so it's likely just from a single plant. Really? Yeah. Bees have so constancy. They stick to a particular plant when they... Wow. And they it's find an attraction to a certain flower. That's the only flower that they'll work. Real warm in here, too. Yes. Yeah. In the 90s. Normal temperature for a hive. Really? Inside it's 90s? Mm-hmm. Wow. So the honey that I've got at the hotel came from these sleeves up there, obviously. How did you get it from here? Into the jars? Up to there, into the jars at the into hotel. Into the jars. You know? So I'll take this frame yeah. and scratch the cappings. The top surface. Right. And yep. then I'll put two frames opposite each other in a barrel. And I put them in a basket and drop the basket into the barrel. And then I, through a crank mechanism, spin the frame so the honey spins out. Hits the walls of the container of the, yep. and the honey runs down to the bottom. Down. Let's go down below and yep. make sure things are healthy. All right. We'll check out. Now we'll find the queen down here, yeah? Yes, sir. We should. Yeah. Plenty of smoke. Okay, down here we can see the rest of the colony. Yeah, I got one up my sleeve. Yeah. Now this is all, this is where the eggs are laid and the bees are raised and life and birth and all that takes place. This is one of the joys of beekeeping is the freshest, freshest honey. Hmm. You know what the bear knows. How many bees do we have here? Uh, each of these colonies probably have about 25,000 bees at this point. Uh, Each a one. Two brood chamber colony might be 50,000 to 100,000, depending on the time of the year. They ramp their populations up in accordance with the local plants for hmm. pollen and nectar collection. Yeah. Now they'll clean up all this honey here. They'll be done with that and in about 10 minutes. And it'll go back minutes. into the comb. Yeah. And it'll go back into the comb, and maybe it'll finish some of the cells that need to be capped. Yeah. 
Look at these guys all in a line, shoulder to shoulder, cleaning up that honey. It's fascinating. One great way to distract them is to spill a little honey and they'll leave you alone. Well, I mean, looks like you've got the hard job, the fun job, and, and the easy job, I guess, for me is to get it back to the hotel and start playing with it, you know? But yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You enjoy and, a little comb honey as well? Ah, uh, yeah. This looks great. Can I take him with me? If you like. No. How about the <laughs> one on okay. your lapel? <laughs> the one on your hat? <laughs> yeah, they, they seem to like me, don't they? Yeah. Freshest honey in the world. Today what we're going to do is put together a dish that was inspired by the bees that we just saw. As this project evolves, um, we try to incorporate that into Preston's menu. So I'm going to go ahead and put that together for you today. We'll start by mincing some of the garlic and uh, the shallot. So those two are all set. I'm going to go ahead in the small Teflon pan, I'm going to add the Green Mountain Gruyere. And we'll just sprinkle that on the bottom of the pan. And we're just going to let that melt and slowly brown. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that in the oven so as we're working on other projects that we can go ahead and have that working at the same time. As the cheese is melting in the pan, I'm going to go ahead and start the sauce as well. A little bit of the shallot, just a little bit of garlic. I don't want to overpower the garlic with it as well. All we want to do is translucent, so we keep an eye on the shallot. A little bit of white wine. So the white wine is evaporated. It's down to about 50%, which is what we like. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of the heavy cream. Now we're just going to let this cook slowly, and we're going to allow that to reduce down to a sauce consistency. I've got a all naturally raised chicken breast here. All we're going to do for this application, we're just going to go ahead and season it. Salt, white pepper, and sear that off in that thyme infused olive oil. I want a nice brown sear on the chicken. That's going to help keep the juices inside and lock that flavors inside. Right before I'm going to hit this into the oven, I've got a little bit of chicken stock here. I'm going to add that to the pan, and as that's cooking into the oven, um, that's also going to slowly reduce. I'm going to put those pan drippings right on the plate as well. I'm going to go ahead and throw that into the oven, and then we'll get back to the sauce, and we'll finish that up. Let's check that cheese one more time, which is great. So as that cools, it'll get nice and crispy. So you can see how shiny this is getting at this point. So it's reduced nicely. Put a little bit of the honey into here. Beautiful thing about this honey that we're working with is the intense flavors that it has. It's amazing. So I'm just adding a little bit of butter, which helps smooth this out and balance it. All right, so you can see that consistency. It's really nice. You still see the shallot and garlic in there, so what I'll do is give that a quick strain. We'll get those out. We'll just give that uh, chicken just a few more minutes, and we'll go ahead and start assembling. All right, the chicken is great. All right. So well, let's get the uh, cheese out first. Perfect. And we'll just set that to the side for right now. Spoon this right onto the plate. So we're going to go ahead and set the chicken on the plate. We're also going to take the uh, shallot and garlic out of here now as well. So we're just putting that through a chinois, which is a nice fine mesh um, sieve that we have here. And take this reduction. I'm just going to come right around the plate. Take our sauce. Come up over the chicken. And we're going to take a little bit of that Preston's Pure Honey. A little truffle oil. Nice herbs from the garden upstairs. And we'll put that in. And here is our white truffle spoon bread, Preston's Pure Honey Chicken. Mm -hmm.